Oop, lost my shoe. All right. Got no help tonight, so I'm wow. setting up myself. All right, cool. Ball in, so. Everybody, everybody doing good? Everybody having a good time? Everybody enjoying summer? No. Same, so hot. Can't wait till, uh. No, it ain't fall. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's still like 100 degrees out there. It's not fall. Well, not here. Well, my birthday didn't fall, and my birthday is December 20th, so. My birthday is December 20th. My birthday is December 20th. That's like straight up winter. The first day of winter is December 21st, technically. Wow. Really? Like, yeah. I'm just like all of December. What's it? It's December. Like now it's like Christmas season. Yeah, it's, it's, it's winter time. It, yeah. Uh, December starts winter period. Like when it November, gets October, October. It doesn't matter what's cold. technical. December until it stops being cold. That's winter. Ah, that's cool. Then you get spring and then, you know, a whole bunch of hot summer. Yeah. Technicalities don't matter. Winter yeah. does. Yeah. Off of the that's just true. And then it's, it's different depending on what uh, part of the country you're in, too. So. Like Minnesota, which is basically all year, then you get the wet season with mosquitoes. Yeah. yeah. Mosquitoes are safer. Yeah, mosquitoes in <laughs> Minnesota were just mosquitoes in June the month. worst. June month is pretty fine because Casey is terrified of them. The worst. Okay, let us pray. Father, come forward tonight, Lord. We just thank you for the ability to come to this place and to worship you and to get in your word and to eat Skittles and play fun games and to accuse people of stealing the Statue of Liberty. And, uh, uh, we just thank you, Father, for uh, all you've done for us and all that you have planned to do. We just pray that our hearts are open and receptive to receive your word and bear fruit from it. Pray that we'd all have a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, and that the eyes of our understanding would be flooded with light. Pray that we come to know you more deeply, more intimately, that we come to know your love through actual experience for ourselves. We just plead the blood of Jesus Christ every time one of us, that we would walk in your coming blessing and your coming protection. And we just give you all the praise and glory for, uh, for everything you've done in our lives and all the great things that you have planned, Lord. Uh, thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So, uh, for the, the last little bit, uh, we've been kind of leading in to um, talking about change, right? We've been kind of skirting around the issue about uh, change, kind of uh, laying some of the groundwork, um, you know, to, to get to change. So, tonight we're going to start that, uh, that series on change. It's probably going to go uh, probably all the way through October. Um, the, the first couple, we're just going to talk about, uh, kind of ask a couple questions and go from there. Uh, then uh, we got some, some fun stuff. What? <laughs> Flip over band me. No, you're not. I'm watching you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, probably next month, we're going to move into some fun stuff, start putting some practical application to things. So it'll be good. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this is one of the things I'm super, super excited about. Uh, it always makes me think of uh, my first year in Go. I actually went back and uh, looked at some of my notebooks from my first year in Go because uh, there's just so much uh, change in my life that happened my first year and so much of an emphasis uh, on change uh, with uh, my five-fold director back then. And so uh, I think it's just really important um, that uh, change is a big part of our lives and something that we focus on. You guys good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta at least make it to a birthday, okay? The best good girl. <laughs> okay. I know there's not a lot of, yeah, I know there's no interns and stuff around here uh, tonight to keep you guys in line, but please pay attention. Uh, this is really, really important. And uh, we're going to be talking about this for a while, so let's try to follow along so that uh, it doesn't have to go longer than it needs to. Okay. So tonight, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about change. Um, and the main question uh, for the next couple of weeks, um, basically each, uh, each message is going to be based around a question regarding change. So this week, the, the question is, why do we need to change, right? So if I tell you that you need to change, the first question should be, well, why? Why is, this, why is this necessary? Why do I need to change? What about me is needing change, right? Okay, so first off, let's uh, start with a definition. I love the definitions. It's always good to be on the same page to know uh, what we're talking about and what the word that we're talking about means. So to change, it means to cause, to turn, or pass from one state to another, to alter or make it different, to vary in external form or in essence, to put one thing in the place of another, to shift, to quit one thing or state for another. Uh, so, you know, Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? It's, you know, 
from one thing, stop trying to kill me with your laser vision. So it's from one thing, over there with your smoldering stare. <laughs> or soul. Jumanji uh, 2. I know, I can't wait for Jumanji 2. The Rock's just funny and everything he does. But uh, I got that, that Rock figure. <laughs> Stand on the Rock. No, I was in the first one. Yeah. Where is he? You haven't seen it? You were not here a couple weeks ago? I was. I haven't seen him, but where is he? Oh, he's in the youth room. But, um, so, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward, right? So change is, so, one way, and then change would be to be a different way, right? To replace one thing with another thing. Pretty straightforward definition, right? I think oh, we all basically know what change means. So let's look at Romans 12, 2. It's the Amplified Classic, Romans 12, 2. And once again, I would recommend that you all bring Bibles and notebooks so you can be Buff Spongebob. Meme. Anybody see the, the meme on Instagram? No. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. It was funny. No. I made it myself. Okay, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world or this age. You guys know what being conformed means? You know what that means? Be conformed? Yes. Lovely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, basically it means to be shaped and molded, right? So don't be conformed or shaped and molded to this world, this age. Fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. But be transformed, changed, oh, look at that. But be transformed, changed, by the entire, entire, entire renewal of your mind, by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight. All right, so now let's, let's go ahead and move forward on to the question. Once again, why? Why do I need to change? It's an important question to ask. Why do I need to change? First, first off, let's uh, start naturally and move, move into spiritually, right? So change naturally in life. It's something that we all go through um, because you know, we all started out as a little baby, and now we are all not little babies or maybe just bigger babies. But, you know, so growth is just a natural part of life, right? And growth is change, right? When your body grows, it changes. You go from being baby body to older body to older, older body, and then, you know, your body's just falling apart. But uh, so we go through change, right? Part of growth is change. And a natural part of life is growth, right? Uh, life would be kind of weird if you never grew, right? Like if, you, if you're like, you know, 40 years old and you're still a baby, uh, something, something is wrong. Right, something is abnormal. You have a condition, right? Yeah, I mean, some people are mentally and emotionally and whatnot, and that's a whole other thing we'll get to. But uh, growth is just a part of life. It is a necessary part of life. You know, for you to be successful in life, for you to thrive, for you to be, you know, a healthy living human, you have to grow. And part of growth is change, right? Um, some behaviors and thinking are okay. And sometimes even cute as little children. Like, can you think of like certain things that like kids do that are like things that you know kids do that are just like really cute? Like, like they, they run around and they trip over themselves and they fall over, right? Or they kind of mumble around and like they, they don't talk English very well. You know, they, they, they don't use their words very well, so it's kind of hard to, to understand. Like, oh, yeah, that's cute. So you know, kid doesn't know how to talk, or you know, just. Just other things that, you know, kids do that is kind of cute. Like, you know, little kid, like, throwing a tantrum. No! It's like, oh, kids. Yeah, it is. Sometimes cute, sometimes, like, just please shut up. That's like, yeah, okay, kids, kids throwing a tantrum. You know, it's, it's what kids do. You know, there's certain things that, you know, are okay and understandable and acceptable. And sometimes it be cute for little kids to do, right? But would be very not okay for adults. Like, imagine as an adult... You know, somebody would just be mumbling around, just like that, 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 that. like you're trying to hold a conversation with somebody. Like, like you go up to you know to the store and whatnot, and you're trying to buy something. You go, to the, you know, clerk behind the desk, and you're like, hey, like I'd like to buy this, or can you help me? Uh, like I'm looking for such and such a part for like the car or something. Like can you help me with this, and then you go, you said, okay, like this, this isn't funny, dude. Like. Seriously, I need this part. Like, my like car's on fire. On and, uh, you know, like, it, that's not cute. It's not funny. It is not acceptable. Like, dude needs to grow up, right? Or, you know, as I'm sure that we've all seen, a grown adult throwing a tantrum like a toddler. <laughs> that is not okay. 
that is not acceptable, right? Like, and it's, you know, it's okay as a child, because why? The child doesn't know anything. The child has yet to grow. They are still changing. And they haven't gotten to a point to where we expect them to be a certain way. But as an adult, you're expected to have already changed some things in your life. To, to make some changes and to grow, right? It's kind of expected. If you saw somebody that behaved and acted and thought like a toddler when they're 40 years old, you look at them and say, this person has a problem. This person clearly has some developmental issues. This person has not changed in, or grown in the areas that they should have by now, right? It's a, it becomes a problem, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became a man, or when I became mature, other translation says, I put away childish things. So when you grow up, when you mature, you're supposed to change and grow and put away childish things, right? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. Brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I found it impossible to speak to you as those who are spiritually mature people. For you are still dominated by the mindset of the flesh, and because you are immature infants in Christ. So here's, uh, here's Paul, right? Paul's trying to uh, teach some things to the church of Corinth, right? He's trying to instruct them and help them and help them grow, right? But he says, you guys should be at a certain level by now. I should be able to speak certain things to you. And impart certain things to you and, you know, help you in certain things based on where you should be. But you aren't there yet. Your growth has been stunted. You have not changed in the areas that you should have at this point. So thus, I am unable to bring to you the things that I am supposed to bring to you, right? It says, brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I found it impossible to speak to you as those who are spiritually mature people. For you are still dominated by the mindset of the flesh. So basically what he's implying here is, you shouldn't be, right? By this point in your walk with Christ, you should not still be dominated by the mindset of the flesh. So what he's saying is, you haven't changed. You have produced no change, no growth in your spiritual lives, right? And because you are immature infants in Christ. So he's saying that you guys should be mature, but you are still infants, right? So this is... Uh, that's so weird. So this is spiritually stunted growth, right? Your spiritual growth has been stunted. And for those of you who are in discipleship, what is what is uh, one of the definitions of a disciple? You guys remember? Follower of God. Well, yes, that's one. Yeah. But I'm looking for a specific one. Yeah, that's that's another one. But I'm looking for a specific one. Wait. The one that uh, that Terrence Terrence said. I said that uh, that Terrence said. He said that a disciple takes responsibility for their own spiritual development, right? Which part of development is growth. So you could say a disciple takes responsibility or is proactive in their own spiritual growth. So it could be said that if you don't take responsibility or if you aren't proactive in your own spiritual growth or your own spiritual change for the better, then you are not truly a disciple, that you're not truly following. Because, you know, I give the example multiple times that, you know, the, the idea of our lives walking with Christ is that Christ is walking and we are following him, right? We, we are walking with Christ and we are following after him. So a disciple is somebody who would follow after him, right? So part of that, if you want to keep up, then to keep up with him, you're going to be, have to be in a constant state of change because he's going to be constantly moving forward, right? It's not called standing with Christ, right? It's not called relaxing on the sofa with Christ, right? It's not, you know, our walk with Christ isn't standing, stagnation, never changing. It's just, yep, me and Christ, we're just kind of here, you know, it's, Jesus is moving forward. You know, he's always, he's always doing something. He's always moving forward, and so for us to be walking with him, we always have to be in a state of moving forward as well, right? Matthew 5, 48. Matthew 5, 48. You, therefore, must be perfect, growing in complete maturity of godliness and mind and character, having reached the proper height uh, of virtue and integrity, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So, you know, be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. And, you know, the, the word perfect that's used here, as the Amplified says, 
is, means growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity. So it just means maturity, right? And maturity is something that you reach through growth and change, right? So like, at, go back to the, the natural baby analogy. You know, if a baby never grows or changes, then, then you could say that the baby has never matured, right? That it stayed a baby. But when it, you know, when you grow up to you know being older and not a baby anymore, then they would say that you have matured, right? So you know, the, the first aspect of why you need to change is because growth requires change, and we are required to grow. Right? It's not okay to stay where you are physically, obviously it's not okay, and spiritually it's not okay for you to stay in a state of babyhood or, and never grow, never mature. Right? So one reason why we need to change is because you need to change to grow, and you need to grow, you need to mature. Right? Uh, now, uh, going back to something that we've talked about uh, quite often is I think it's just a subject that I think is really cool, so I like to talk about it and bring it up all the time. And it's very important, I think, in our lives to keep in mind is another reason that we need to change is because uh, our default state is against God, right? So if we never changed, then that would mean that we would stay in our default state, which is not a good place to be, right? The Bible talks about how we were enemies to God, that we were separated from Him, that we were not in the right place, that we all looked like... A, uh, Maddie over there with our angry eyes, you know, so we need to change and mature and grow so that we are no longer angry eyes Anyway <laughs> it, might be, it might be a well, we don't have time. It remind me of a return that we had years ago Where we'd be like morning, morning session yeah. and I'm like, hey, bud, like you gotta keep your head up <laughs> Look at this dude, right? He's like 14 year old kid. He goes you want to go in the sewer and I'll make you float. Oh, oh God. Okay, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And his fullness fills you, uh, even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, uh, the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. So, basically to summarize, our default state was against God, in rebellion to God, serving the devil, right? So by default, all of us were born, whoop, there you go. That's you. We need a change, right? That is not an acceptable place for us to continue living our life, right? You can see so much of the world continues living their life in that place because they've never come around to uh, accepting Jesus. But uh, you know, only through Jesus can we change this. But we do need to change this, right? This, like, this is obviously not an okay state to live in. And obviously all of us here are no longer in this state. But that is because we have made a change, right? That's another reason why we need change. Our lives require, our lives require, I feel like I said that weird. Our lives require, our lives require drastic change to be in right standing with God. Because obviously we understand that, you know, servants of the devil are not children of God, right? So to be, go from Don't one thing to another, which once again is the definition of? Don't look at me. <laughs> Change, change. Hey. To, to go from one thing to another, it was like five minutes ago, guys. <laughs> that is the definition of change, to go from one thing to another. So, 
you know, servants of God, or servants of the devil, to children of God, that is a change. 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 All right, we're catching up. So, uh, our lives require drastic change to be in right standing with God. Thankfully, God already did the biggest part by giving us a change of heart and identity. So, literally, just the next few verses here from what we were just reading. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. Um, I think it's the same verses, but then a couple more, actually. And his fullness fills you, even though you were once like corpses, dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't long, it wasn't long ago that you lived in rebellious and, and uh, religion, customs, and values of the world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm, who fills the atmosphere with his authority, and works diligently, diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by uh, whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living in rebellion, uh, living as rebellious children, subject to God's wrath like everyone else. But God, I'll tell you what, I really love when the Bible goes, from, okay, here's some bad stuff that is what you were, but God, so forget all that because it gets better. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, He united us. Uh, uh, he united us in the very life of Christ. So once again, that changes our identity, right? And He saved us with His wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ the exalted one. Uh, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. So, Jesus did all the heavy lifting, right? So the biggest change that we needed to produce in our lives, Jesus did for us. All we have to do is say yes to it, right? So, the, the biggest change is already out of the way. So, good news. We're talking about change. Some of you are maybe like, oh great. I don't want to change. Change is difficult. Good news, the hardest change that you could have to do in your life that is actually impossible for you to accomplish, Jesus already did it for you. So good news, we can get that out of the way. All of us born again, raise your hand if you're born again. Maddie, raise your hand. We'll cast that demon out. Okay, so all of us are born again. So, so biggest change out of the way, we're good, right? But now, now uh, we must work to line up our lives uh, with the new heart and identity that Jesus gave us. So Jesus gives us a new identity and a new heart. Now the changes that we must produce in our lives are the changes that line up our lives with that, right? Uh, we must put our flesh under subjection and renew our mind to the Word of God, right? Because, you know, whenever Jesus changed our identity and our heart, you know, uh, or our spirit, you know, the Bible says the hidden man of the heart talking about the spirit, right? So God changed our spirit, right? When we're born again, our spirit is a new creation, right? We're completely changed. Our identity, who we are, is completely changed. But who we are is a spirit. So we understand that we're a, a tree, a, a tree part being. We understand that we're a three part being, right? That we are a spirit. We have a soul, our mind, will, and emotion, and we live in a body. So only one of the three was changed and became a new creation. Only our spirit. That means we still have our flesh and our soul. That remain untouched, right? And that's not a problem, because we still got those, right? And so always you understand that our flesh is not going to be renewed. Our flesh is just our flesh. Uh, that's just kind of how it is. So you have to put it under subjection to your new identity in Christ. And your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, you renew by the word of God, right? Uh, so let's uh, look at 1 Corinthians 9, 27. I don't have a soul. 1 Corinthians what? Yes, you we do, my girl. Yes, you have a mind, you have a will, and you have uh, emotions, clearly. Okay, <laughs> First Corinthians 9, 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So I discipline my body, put it under, uh, under subjection. The Bible also says that those of us who are in Christ have crucified our flesh, right? Romans 12, 2. Once again, we already read this earlier. But uh, do not be conformed to the way, uh, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to ex its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire, entire renewal of your mind, right? 
by its new ideas and new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. So we must uh, put our flesh into subjection to our, our spirit and renew our mind to the Word of God, right? So those are changes that we have to do, right? God already changed our spirit, already changed our heart, but we, it's up to us to change our, well, to put in, into subjection our flesh and to change our soul, our mind, will, and emotions by subjecting it to the Word of God, right? Okay, another, so that's another, so first reason we need to change is, that's a yawn, close though, close. First reason we need to change is, why do we need to change? We talked about that during it. Huh? No, not quite. Because we need to grow. We need to grow, right? Growth, you know, growth requires change. So one we need to change is we need to grow. We need to mature. Second reason we need to change is what we literally just talked about. So I mean, hopefully, hopefully you guys got this. Huh? The next reason we need to change is because we need to change our soul. Yeah, we need to we need to yeah to change our, our soul to line up with our spirit, right? Put our flesh under subjection. So we need to change because our default state is against God, right? So we need to change to separate ourselves from our default state. Okay, the next reason we need to change is because it is needed for repentance, right? And then repentance is one of those words that people don't really use, huh? <laughs> to remember. So, yeah, you didn't know there was going to be a quiz, did you? So, repentance is one of those words that we don't tend to use a lot in church anymore. But it's really a simple thing. Like, I think we think of repentance as, like, this kind of, like, old, like, kind of creepy things. Like, oh, like, repentance. Like, no, I'm, I'm under grace. I don't need to repent. But literally, all repent means is just to change. That's literally what it means. Like, the, the literal definition of repent is... Is to turn around. That's all we're going to mean is to turn around, right? So if you're going one way, it's wrong. Turn around, change your direction, go the other way, right? Matthew uh, 3, 1 through 2. In those days, there appeared John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, think differently, change your mind, regretting your sins and changing your conduct, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the prophet prophet of John, that came to usher in the appearing of Jesus, his message was repent. His message was change. Right? Uh, Matthew 4, uh, 17. So next chapter. Uh, From that time, Jesus began to preach, crying out, repent! Change your mind for the better. Uh, heartily uh, amend your ways uh, with abhorrence of your past sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what did Jesus preach when he started his ministry? Repent. Change. So what did the prophet that came before Jesus preach? Change. What did Jesus preach when he started his ministry? Change. So I, I feel like maybe there's something we should be catching here. Maybe we should change. Maybe we should pay attention to the possibility that we need to change. All right, let's go a little bit further. Uh, Mark 6, uh, 7, 12, and 13. Mark chapter 6, verses 7, 12, and 13. So they went out and preached that men should repent. Oh, wait. No, skip this. Uh, there's a space there. I got confused. Uh, so Jesus is calling his 12. says, He called to him the 12 apostles and began to send them out as his ambassadors, two by two, and gave him authority and power over unclean spirits. So they went out and they preached that men should repent, that they should change their minds for the better and heartily amend their ways with abhorrence to their past sins. And they drove out many unclean spirits and anointed them with oil, uh, many who were sick and cured them. So what did Jesus have the disciples preach when he sent them out? Change! Right? It's like, I'm starting to, to see a pattern here, you know, that, uh, that perhaps a big part of Jesus' ministry and, you know, John's before him was change. You know, the whole, you know, one thing we've talked a while back that the whole reason that Jesus came was to change people's hearts. And, yeah, that's what we talked about just a minute ago, that that's what he did for us, right? Yeah. Ah, 
Okay. Matthew 3, verse 8. You must prove your repentance by a changed life. So that means you, to repent or to change, you must actually change. So like, you know, if repentance is you're going one way, it's the wrong way, so you turn around and go the other way to change. So that means you actually have to turn around. You actually have to go away from where you were going and change your direction. So, what is the third reason why we need to change? Is in there? Huh? Need for repentance. Yes, change is needed for repentance. And obviously repentance is needed for salvation because you have to change, right? You have to change your direction. All right, moving on to the next one. Another reason that uh, we must change, and uh, we'll just go over this really quick because this is kind of what we're going to be talking about next week. We must change to line up with the word, right? Because uh, I mean, it's very simple. I literally love how simple this is. It's so simple. So many people don't get it, but it really is like... So simple. Is okay, so I don't actually have the Bible on my iPad, but I want to bring back like this really big blue Bible I have just for like a prop. It's hilarious. It's it's really, really big. But uh, so so let's say here's what the word says, right? Here's what the word says is truth, here's what the word says is reality, here says here's what the word says you should believe, here's how the word says you should think, here's what the word says how you should act and behave and conduct yourself, and now here's you. Anything in you you guys good? This is perfect. really, really important. I want to talk about this next week, but it's still really important. So, if this is you, and there's anything in you that doesn't match the word, then that means you repent. need, yes, you repent. That means you need to change, right? It's so simple. If this doesn't line up with this, this ain't changing. So, this has to change. And so many people, like, like it's such like a foreign concept. And like, like, people get offended when you bring that to them. It's like, this has never changed. Like, like the word is always the word. It's always been here. The word has always said that this is not okay and that this is. So, you know, if you're this way and it's the opposite of the word, guess what? You need to change. Yes, you need to repent. You need to turn around and go in the opposite direction. Right? Okay, uh, John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. Psalms 33, 4, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. Uh, Psalms 119, 160, the entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Every scripture has been inspired by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. It is empowered, uh, it will empower you uh, by the instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God has given you. Wow, that's a lot of what we were just talking about. Isn't that interesting? So if the word is true, and anything in your life is opposite of the word, and that means you're not living the truth, so you need to change, right? Pretty straightforward. We'll talk about that later. Just want to skip over that. So, fourth reason that you need to change is if oh, you don't if match this, match this then yeah, if your life is yeah to line up your life with the word, you need to change, right? Okay, so let's okay, let's go over those all real quick. First reason you need to change. Mally, wait, wait, I know this. Shh, shh. Maturity. Maturity! Well, you can grow up! <laughs> okay, second reason. Repent. No, that's the third reason. No, that's the third one. Second reason is to grow up. Spirit. Yes. That. No, take responsibility for your spirit. Uh, our souls spirit. to match up with them. No, that's no, not. No, 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 that's the fourth. Take responsibility for spirit. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Soul to match up with them. Oh, spirit. 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 Yeah, so to change from our default state. Yeah, for to line up with our new identity in Christ, right? Um, uh, third reason. Need for repentance. Need for repentance. There you go. And the fourth reason. Line with the word. Line with the word. All right. Good. So this is why you should take notes. If you take notes, then that'd be super easy. And then you could, you know, remember for future. Yeah. I guess it's good because we put it on YouTube, so you just watch it. No, it's nice. I'm glad I took notes when I was an intern, so I went back and relooked at them all. None of them really helped me for what I was working on, but it's really fun to look through them all. Notes never do. 
Yeah, well, I mean, they were good notes, but some of the stuff in there, I was like, wow, this is really good stuff. It just wasn't what I was looking for at the time. Okay, uh, now we'll close with this. Um, the idea, because uh, we're going to be talking about change for a while now, and uh, our flesh is resistant to change. Um, we're, we all know it. Uh, you know, this isn't a big heavy revy, but uh, our flesh does not like change, right? That's why so many people get mad and offended. Like, if you are doing something wrong, and I come up to you and say, hey, what you're doing is wrong, the word says you should do it this way, you need to change. You're probably offended, right? You're probably like, uh, how dare you say I'm wrong? I'm like the best, okay? Like, whatever, like, like, we hate to change. We would rather not have to. We would rather be right, right? We would rather not have to change, because if we don't change, that means that we're good, right? And as a society, that's kind of where everybody is. It's kind of like, you just do you. You just live your life. You, you know? Boo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, hey, what, what, whatever you feel, just live however you feel, right? That's kind of how our society works now. But that's, that just shows how resistant we are to change, right? Because there is one set standard of truth and reality. And anything that doesn't line up with that needs to change, right? But our flesh doesn't like that idea. Uh, we live in a very fleshly society. That's why everybody's so violently, quite literally, resistant to change. But uh, so it's important that we uh, set ourselves up in a position to where we uh, pursue and desire change, right? Not just change for change's sake, but change for the word's sake. To change, to line up with the word, to line up with your identity, right? Okay. Yeah, I want because anybody can just change for change's sake, but it has to be deliberate and functional and progressive change, right? Uh, for something. Um, and a reason that you uh, you need to be proactive in uh, seeking out change is because the natural order of things uh, slants toward uh, chaos and uh, and decay. I mean, there there's you know even laws and science that state the natural order of things is to decay and to plummet into chaos. So that's why, you know, if you just sit around and you do nothing with your body, your body will begin to atrophy and will no longer work. Like if you take, you have, if you take your arm and you tie it to yourself and you don't use it for a long period of time, your arm will start to not work properly, right? You'll lose muscle and, you know, your, your, your muscles get stiff and you'll, you'll fuse together and you won't be able to use it. And that's, that's how things go, right? If things aren't pushed into an avenue of change and growth, they will atrophy, right? And that's why I like what uh, Pastor Lynn Hanley says in uh, at Minneapolis at a Living Word up there. Uh, she said that if you're not if you're not moving forward with God, if you're not progressing with God and your relationship with God and changing every day, then you're backsliding. Well, a lot of times you know, we talk about this word like when you think about backsliding, you think about it like okay, so if somebody if a Christian were to backslide, that means you know, you're going to church and stuff one day, and then the next day, you're in the club shooting up heroin. You have backslid. That's kind of what we think. Like, you know, whenever, whenever like, church ladies gossip, and they're like, oh, yeah, Bad, Ruth, Ruth is really backslid. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's living in a tent village with her boyfriend, doing heroin. She's really backslid. But then again, you know, church lady over here gossip, so she backslid too, you know. But uh, really, all it takes to backslide is to just not move forward, right? Because if the idea is... Jesus is always moving forward. If you stay still, you're creating a gap, right? So you are getting further behind. Jesus, you're getting further, you're sliding into the back of where you're supposed to be going, right? So that's why we have to be constantly moving forward and chasing uh, positive change, right? Progressive change is like swimming upstream. It takes great effort and dedication because you will always be moving against the natural and easy flow. Change isn't easy. Um, change requires strength. It requires energy. It requires thought. It requires dedication. I don't want to speak. <laughs> you know, and oftentimes, change will even come with persecution. You start trying to change your life to line it up more with the Word of God, maybe that will make some of your friends uncomfortable. Maybe some of your friends won't like to see you change. Maybe they'll feel offended by your change because your change, because oftentimes when you change, 
that will require those around you to change as well. Like, if you have Christian friends that you hang around, and, you know, maybe you're all not living uh, rightly in a certain way, and you decide that you're going to change that in your life. Now, even without you, like, going up to them, like, hey, listen, you need to change like I'm changing. you just living out that change will convict you. They'll realize, oh, snap, I need to change too, but they may be resistant to it. They may not be as um, uh, proactive in changing as you are, and maybe that will make them offended at you. So it could even come with persecution. It's not easy. It's change is like swimming upstream. You're going against the current. The natural order is shifted toward chaos and decay. And, you know, our society is shifted toward, uh, in the fleshly way of being anti-change. So if you're, to, if you're going to pursue a lifestyle of uh, positive, progressive change, you will be swimming upstream. So just so everybody knows, you know, if, uh, if you decide to take this seriously and go with this and make this part of your life, it is not going to be the easy way. You will be taking the, the road less traveled, right? That's why the, the Bible says that, you know, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few take it. Because the bigger road is a lot easier to travel. Um, also, don't defend something that is not God. A lot of times, we try to defend things in our lives that are not God, that are not godly, and are actually anti-God, because it means we don't have to change. If you can defend it, then that means you don't have to change it. Don't defend things that aren't God. Recognize it, expose it, and change it. We must be passionate about pursuing change in our lives. And it will be a constant thing. You'll never be done. You'll never get done changing. You'll never get done growing. One thing that Pastor Steve teaches uh, vehemently is the importance of always maintaining a teachable spirit. And what is a teachable spirit? It is a spirit, it is an attitude that is open, accepting, and welcoming to change and to input or accountability Maybe we talked about accountability, uh, was that last week? Not about, was that last week? That feels like a long time ago. Last week we were in the Oh, yeah, yeah, I was about to say, this seems like a long time ago. Yeah, the week before last, we were in the circle, talking about accountability, right? So you got to remain teachable, because uh, part of that, part of being teachable is being open and receptive and accepting of change, right? And part of that, part of that comes from being accountable, having people in your life that, uh, um, that you open yourself up to their input in your life, right? Uh, to keep you accountable. Okay, so we'll end with uh, these two scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27. A true athlete will be disciplined in every respect, practicing uh, constant self-control in order to win a laurel, a laurel young, a wreath that quickly withers, uh, but we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. For that reason, I don't run uh, just for exercise or box like one throwing aimless punches, but I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body and get it under control so that after preaching the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. Philippians 3, uh, 10 through 14. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. That I may in the same way come to know the power overflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers. That I may so share his sufferings and be continually transformed or changed uh, in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. That if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in this body. That uh, Not that I have now attained this ideal, or that have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold, to grasp and to make my own. That for which Christ the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. So what he's saying there is, you know, I realize that I haven't made it there yet. So I am going to be in a constant process of changing or transforming myself into his image, right? And I, he says, I press on to lay hold and to grasp, to make my own. That means, and once you get back to the beginning of this, he says, my determined purpose is, he's 
He's focused, he's passionately focused and pursuing this change, right? Um, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured or made of my own yet. But one thing I do is that I, uh, that it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. So here for, uh, for the next while, we're going to be uh, really hitting hard on, uh, on change. And uh, uh, here probably in October, we're going to start talking about some practical uh, ways to uh, bring about change. Uh, but for the next couple weeks, we're going to continue with uh, the questions about change. So tonight, the, the, the premise of what we're talking about is why the need to change. Why change? And I hope by the end of this, uh, you guys have some answers for why it is paramount and important that uh, you live a lifestyle of constant growth and constant change. Because it is needed. We all need it. There's not a single person that doesn't need change. Pastor Steve has been doing ministry for a long time. He's been following God for a long time. And he is the first to tell you that he lives in a constant state of growth and change and accountability. Uh, so, you know, I thank God we can. We all take that example and, uh, and Paul's example of striving and working toward constant change in our lives. And we'll talk more about this as we move forward. Um, so thank you guys for being here tonight. Anybody got any uh, comments or questions or any of that? Yeah. Exactly. It was good. All right. All right. Uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, your spirit that is in us and on us and working through us, Lord. We thank you for uh, doing all the heavy lifting and producing a... Uh, uh, our change of identity, our change of being, our change of species, that you have made us a whole new creature uh, in you. Uh, we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the grace upon our lives to continue to grow and continue to change and to continue to seek and serve you the rest of our lives. And we just thank you, Father, for everything you've done in our lives, everything that you have planned to do. And we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ for each and every one of us that we walk in your covenant blessing and your covenant protection. And uh, we just thank you for Maddie, Lord. We thank you that, uh, that uh, it's going to be her birthday on Friday. Uh, we thank you for how awesome that she is and how much we love her and appreciate her. And we just thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Don't forget Maddie's card over there. Make sure you sign it before you leave. Let her know how much you love her or uh, something. No, say something funny or weird. Love you just have to appreciate me. <laughs> but we love and appreciate you, Maddie.